you'll see right here our six head, our single heads, and our, our two head way in the back there. Right now we're running a big order for a customer so you can get to see that running. So right here we have our direct to garment station. You'll see Renee over here, he's pre-treating some garments for online orders. Embroidery, you gotta know what you're doing. Yep. Direct to garment, you gotta know what you're doing. But as far as screen printing, you're the one pressing it through the screen. You're the one burning the screen. You're the one coding the screen. All that stuff, there's so many variables, there's so many things that can go wrong. So there's a real learning curve, but uh, we got to a point where we can actually produce a quality product for our customers and also for our sub-labels down the shore for different brands that we actually sell out of our retail store. So yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun, but of course challenging. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, pretty much this is our front office. We also like to call it the pit because this is where like a lot of like the hardcore online work gets done. Everything that's pretty much like office related, should we say. Um, you know, we have a bunch of desks here. Our interns come in here. Our content team really does a lot of work out of here, specifically right over here where we have kind of like a little makeshift photography studio you know one thing that's big with us is we like to make our space work so we like to maximize our square footage and get as much as we can out of it so here we do like a lot of our headwear shots for like our 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 retail side of the business right here behind me you'll even see that we have like a backdrop here that's where we do our model photography and things like that we even do different planning we write on the windows it's, it gets pretty crazy here but this is kind of like where we come together just to kind of bang through the work when when it comes to online or whatever it is uh, as far as content and things like that. Gotcha. I see we have a kind of the shop right behind us here. Let's check this out. Yeah, so these barn doors right here were all custom made and designed. It was all Muhammad's idea. I, I actually am a big fan of them yeah, because cool. it makes it really smooth to transition from space to space. Absolutely. So we'll come right here. This is really the hub uh, of the warehouse. It's the front receiving and shipping department. Uh, this is where all of our online orders, this is like made to order, print on demand stuff that we do for our online customers that order like a t-shirt, we print it and we ship it, different designs. Uh, so it gets shipped and fulfilled out of here. This is also where a lot of our inventory will come in. So you see uh, some of our new inventory for our retail stores is coming in, you know, blank product, everything comes in through here and leaves out through here. So this is kind of, when it comes to our production process, this is where everything starts and ends. When it comes to the custom side of the business, when the blanks come in, uh, we process them, we prep them, sometimes through Deco Network for the work orders to make sure everything is correct, and then it goes back towards our production team, and then I'll show you that next. Cool. Alright, so right here we're in our conference room. This is pretty much where we do a lot of interviews, meetings with different brands that we deal with. We come up with different custom products that we produce. So, uh, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, making a tracksuit or something like that, this is a great sit down place for us to, you know, meet, communicate, share ideas. Um, and yeah, I think it's just a really great space. We're, we're lucky to have it, honestly, because like I said, we didn't have this space when we first built out the warehouse. This was basically part of the warehouse. So one thing that was really important for Muhammad and myself is to have that space, because it's something we never had. Uh, we actually used to have to rent a conference space all the way out in PA. It was, it oh, wow. was, that's a whole separate story, crazy. But, um, but yeah, to be able to bring, you know, whether it's representatives from different brands and vendors that we purchase from, or potential clients. I, I've had meetings with different custom apparel clients out of here. So it's a really functional space and, uh, you know, we use it a lot, so. Yeah, I feel like pretty much anybody running a print shop should have something similar to this where you can, you know, I'm, I can only imagine the good ideas that came from sitting at this table. Oh, for sure, for sure. There, a lot of meetings went down in here, a lot, of, uh, a lot of pivotal moments in the business and a lot of pivotal moments with our client interactions. Um, and you know, I think, uh, I think the conference room historically has a really big impact on how people perceive companies. Sure. Um, well, granted, we don't spend an insane amount of time here. Yeah, yeah. We have important times here where we have meetings and things like that, but most of the work gets done in the warehouse and in the pit. Right. But 
you make a real impression with your conference room. You know, so everything in here was carefully selected, carefully designed from the table, which is like actually live edge, so it's a cut out of a real tree, it's like a real oak tree um, that was custom made for the space, whether it's the lighting, uh, whether it's the different artwork that we put on the wall, you know, we try to create an environment that people are comfortable in, that they can collaborate in, and I think it's super important. Yeah, and this is very cool over here. You kind of, I mean, you guys started uh, started off selling retail apparel and, and hats. Yes. Very cool to see a hat just completely broken down like that. Yeah, so we, um, there's actually a video of the, us doing this on our YouTube channel. Oh, cool. Um, so it's pretty cool. But yeah, you know, one thing that's really awesome about being in the apparel space is you look at products differently. You don't look at items in their finished form. You sure. kind of look, whenever I hold a hat, after we got into embroidery, I'm like, especially when I was learning embroidery, when I didn't know what I was doing, I would look at a logo, you know, from New Era or Mitchell and Ness, and I would look at the detail in the, in the logo, and I'd be like, how did they do this? Like, how did they, you know, years later, now I know how they did it. Um, a lot of these structured hats are embroidered flat, and then they're manufactured and assembled. So that's how you get that finish. But it's, it's, it's really cool. It kind of brings everything together. Um, and uh, of course, we wanted to do a little interesting piece of content for people that are interested in, you know, fitteds and apparel and whatever. But it's crazy. You're looking at this piece. You really uh, wouldn't think this much goes into an item. Right. You know, for most people, a hat is a hat. It ends there. You don't think about the material that's in the brim, that the underbrim is a separate material. There's actual machines designed to create the structure of the crown. So it's really cool. And you know, I think it's a dope piece. I, I'm, I'm glad that we have something you know, that's really personal to us like this in the conference room. I think it's important. So, so we're gonna make our way into the production area. So the first area of production is our embroidery uh, side of the business. So you'll see right here, our six head, our single heads, and our, our two head way in the back there. Right now we're running a big order for a customer so you can get to see that running. Plenty of thread, of course. All my embroidery folks out there that Absolutely. are watching this, you know you need to have as much thread as possible. So we have all of that here. Um, sewing machine, we do a lot of woven label stuff, tailoring stuff, finishing, so that's that's something that we love to do. Over here, over to my right, you'll see our, our quasi-content studio and administrative office where we have various, uh, you know, we do interviews out of there. We also shoot a lot of our content out of there because it's a really nice space. Um, making our way even further back. So one really cool thing about this warehouse is when we first got into it, it was just one big box. We didn't have, all the shelving that you see here was not here. Me and Muhammad actually uh, carried it, literally, from another uh, warehouse uh, and put it all together. A lot of the shelving uh, didn't have actual, uh, like the metallic grates that we needed to put inventory on, so we actually built them from scratch using plywood and two by, two by fours. So all this stuff that you see back here was not here and it was all put together. Um, so there's, a, there's, a, there's two sides to our business, like we kind of mentioned. We have uh, our retail business, so you'll see yep. kind of all these shelves here of different retail product uh, for our, our stores down the shore and our online store. Um, and then we also have, of course, more customization. So here we have some blank products, some blank headwear. Uh, for our embroidery and we start to make our way from the embroidery it's a nice transition into the print side of the business so right here we have our direct to garment station you'll see renee over here he's pre-treating some garments for online orders for customers here's like a stack of online orders that are going to be uh, made and going out here's our conveyor dryer this we use for our screen printing which also uh, uh, is farther back. One thing when we were designing the layout and the flow, we really wanted the cleaner stuff closer yep. to the inventory and the more messy stuff like screen printing 
farther back. Yeah. So direct to garment's a pretty clean process, not not super messy. So that's why it's it's more towards the front, and then obviously in the very very back, that's where the screen printing is. Um, gotcha. So yeah, we have two screen printing presses. We have uh, a, a Sidewinder MNR, and we have this uh, four color four station Vastex. Really great manual presses. Uh, again, we are new to the screen printing side of the business. Our roots are really in embroidery and direct to garment, but um, you know it's a very, very big business for us, uh, and uh, you know it's been really fun to get to learn. Yeah, how fun has it been, kind of teaching yourself a little bit about the screen printing side and getting oh into this? Oh my God, yeah. So, like, so basically six months ago we got the equipment, and just like when it came to the embroidery and the direct to garment, it was like, all right, time to figure this stuff out, you know. So it was, it was fun. Uh, but it's definitely stressful and yeah. I, the, the reason why I say a little stressful is because it's different than any other custom apparel process that we have done sure. in the sense that because these are manual presses a lot of it depends on the operator so you got to really know what you're doing now granted uh, not to take away anything from anybody in a different decoration space embroidery you got to know what you're doing yep. direct to garment you got to know what you're doing but as far as screen printing you're the one pressing it through the screen you're the one burning the screen you're the one coding the screen. All that stuff, there's so many variables, there's so many things that can go wrong. So there's a real learning curve, but uh, we got to a point where we can actually produce a quality product for our customers and also for our sub labels down the shore for different brands that we actually sell out of our retail stores. So yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun, but of course, challenging. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. cool. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much it. We have our washout station back there. Um, dark room. The, this part of the warehouse right here, this little uh, screen printing station, I guess we could say, also was not here. We had to build this out because, uh, again, when we first got into this space, we were not really necessarily thinking about doing custom stuff out of here. Yeah. This was meant to be a distribution center for our retail stores. Uh, but once we really understood what it meant to have a warehouse, what it meant to have a quiet place where you can come and work, we realized that the custom side of it would benefit from, you know, having some 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 space here so yeah. we started to adapt it to that so you know not really a huge dark room but you know we got our exposure table our uh, our screens yeah you know fun stuff and our, our washout room also a lot of fun stuff you know very important part of the process obviously reclaiming yeah. the screens coding the screens all that stuff so Good starting, good starting point. I think a big part about uh, the custom apparel space is like sometimes people don't know where to start, but yeah. the best place to start is just to start, make use of what you have, and along the way, as you figure out the mistakes, you figure out the bumps in the road, you'll get better at it, and uh, the space will always improve. Yeah. So that's, and you can always get new equipment, you can always build out new spaces, but uh, just wasting time is not really the best best use of time, obviously. So. How did you guys go about building this out? Like, where do, where does the creative come from? Of like, hey, we think over here in the corners where it would be a good place to build these rooms out like this like where did that all um, how did that come about so screen printing's messy right so we have uh we have different product that we sell i, I can show you some of the product if we walk over here sure um so i mean obviously a lot of sports licensed apparel a lot of sports licensed headwear so you know this this stuff is uh you know is is retail merchandise you know you got to give it to the customer clean you know not damaged so we were like okay if we're spraying a screen with a power uh what's it called a uh what's it called damn a power washer that's it yeah, yeah. if we're spraying a, a screen with a power washer you know and there's going to be some blowback we don't want that in an open environment uh because it's going to fly everywhere and there's a chance of contamination so so we were like let's close it off put it in the corner as far as possible just to prevent any you know mishaps so sure yeah that was kind of the thought process of that yeah yeah and no, you know if people haven't watched the success story video you guys do licensed apparel that's kind of how you guys got your start yes so um talk about how you kind of integrate that into this current space you know while you're also doing the embroidery and, and a bunch of custom apparel right so when we first uh, got into the space uh, it's, it's kind of hard to visualize but you see these big shelving units right here they actually filled this whole warehouse so right here where we have the screen print press mm -hmm. um, we basically had shelving that went all
all the way down to the end. There was wow. actually also big shelving units where those two, uh, two, two rooms are now, and wow. uh, big shelving units where this dryer is. Basically, just you know, just shelving. Right. And the reason for that was it was meant to be a uh, a central hub, a distribution center for all of our retail merchandise because we get so much inventory. Uh, we have seasonal businesses, so it really peaks right about now, like in the springtime. We start to get you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pieces of inventory, and. Uh, it's very, what we learned was it's very difficult to do that out of a retail store, which is how we used to do it. Yeah. The boxes would come from UPS or FedEx, whatever, to the store. It's a seasonal location. It's very busy. Uh, it's the peak summer. You got customers in. You got seasonal staff. It's just not a recipe for success for processing that inventory. So we were like, listen, we need a centralized place where we could have dedicated staff dealing with this. Uh, and that's, that's where we came with the warehouse. Uh, but then we were like, okay, well, now we need to pivot so it's it's very easy to say we don't have the space for this it, that's so easy because you cut yourself off from the creativity of having to solve the problem what we what we say when we have a problem is how can we make the space and so what we did was me and Mo we literally disassembled these shelves we reallocated them now they're in the front near the receiving center freed up the square footage brought the equipment in and just got started. As simple as that, really. Gotcha. So, all these shelves that are behind me over here, that's all your uh, licensed apparel stuff? Correct, correct. Gotcha. Yeah, so a lot of what we do out of here is uh, is contract work yep. for other shops, uh, print on demand for our online stores. So, like, like I said, everything kind of is like a circle here, right? Yeah. So it starts up front, and it finishes down here, and it goes back out, and that's where it ships. So it's, it's almost like a little mini like circuit. So the, the product comes in, it gets made here, it goes out, it ships, done. Yeah. You know, so we actually don't keep a lot of blank product on hand. Um, now that is something we're looking into in the future just to increase our fulfillment times because um, that's something that we're always looking at. We want to get our customers their product as quickly as possible. Sure. But because a lot of it is contract work and work from the other Berlin store and of course the print on demand stuff, we're able to create a process where we don't have to hold all of that inventory on hand. We can receive the blanks because there's warehouses uh, as close as Robbins New Jersey we get the items within a day yeah. we make them we ship them you know within another couple days and that's it the customer gets the item within a week or two you know yeah. so it's, it's really nice it gives us that flexibility yeah which, now, um, I mean that's just another added stress if you had a bunch of uh, blanks on hand you know not necessarily needing to use them at that time that could, I'm sure that could create other stresses that you don't really need in your life listen coming from a retail background inventory management is one of the hardest things in retail and uh, you can you can ask anyone in retail because why? Well, you can overbuy, you can underbuy, uh, you can lose product, you know, there's theft, there's, there's a million things. Your inventory on your POS system could be wrong, so you're missing opportunity cost, right? So there's so many things that can go wrong. So of course, at some point, that is a, a hurdle that we'll have to face. Um, and uh, it's not one that we're not uh, ready to face because we are accustomed to receiving products on a large scale. Uh, but it's just, it is very nice to not have to have that inventory on hand and still be able to sell to our customers. And that is actually one thing that Deco Network allows as well. Primarily when it has to do with uh, the store setup for schools and things like that, that's a, that's a really strong feature because you can allow these customers from your, your different clients to set up these stores. They're, you know, people in their group to purchase from you and you just make it on demand it's it's super simple it's super intuitive so and I think honestly that's the future of retail I think I think quick manufacturing and to say quick is not to say good quality I think quick good quality manufacturing is the future of retail because it's just better for everybody it's better for the environment it's better for the customer better for the merchant so why wouldn't it move in that direction and now it's possible because of the technology no doubt cool yeah, man, I really appreciate you uh, showing us around. You know, I really like how you kind of had kind of created this like an assembly line. Um, you built onto the space. You made it creative. You have a conference room. You're, you're adding new, uh, you know, options to your business like screen printing. Um, so, you know, I can only see you guys going up from here, man. So I'm sure you, 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 you are, you know, really looking forward to what the future holds for you guys. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Thanks so much to Deco Network for coming out. It's been really, really cool um, having you guys here. And, yeah, I just can't wait to have have you guys back in a couple of years at the next uh, the next new and improved warehouse you know uh, we definitely look forward to it
a lot of growth. So thank you again for coming out, guys. And I hope you, you the viewers, you enjoyed watching this. Um, it's been really, really cool sharing our story with you guys. So thank Absolutely. you for that.